Welcome to Sunny Day Stamping. I'm Julie Baca. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a faux emboss technique. So if you love the texture that an embossing machine gives, but you don't have an embossing machine, you can try this trick. And I'm going to show you how to use it making this cute card. But you can use the same technique using what you have at home. Now if you're new to my channel, you may not know that um, for every video I do, I have a corresponding blog post. So you can go over there and you can get the measurements for all these projects. I want everything to be easily reproducible. I want you to be able to do these at home. And a lot of the things I make, you can use the stamps that you have at home or the other things you have at home. Now, if you are interested in purchasing the supplies, you can buy those over on my website as well. I have a list of the supplies. So you can get that link down below. There's, it says, get the measurements and the supply list. If you click there, it'll take you over to my website. Now for my email subscribers, I email out a one page print and make project sheet that has the links to the blog post, the video, some written instructions, and all the supplies. You can get that. If you are not on my email list, you can subscribe to that. There's a link down below for that also. All right, let's get started. So this is an example of what an embossing folder does. It presses the paper so you can get different images um, creating this texture behind here. So that's what I'm trying to go for. This is another project on my YouTube channel. You can search for that. Um, so what I did is if you don't have an embossing folder, I used a punch to punch out the images repeatedly and glue them to the paper to create that same kind of texture. So you can try this technique with any punch that you have. Um, but I'm going to be using this bundle today, A Fish and a Wish. It is so cute. I love it. And then these, uh, this punch punches out the small fish and the medium-sized fish. So I wanted to show you one example. I made this card without the light blue background. Um, it, it makes the, the embossing look a little more subtle. So you can choose which way you want to do this. I'm going to show you how to do this one. At the end of the video, I have more uh, examples to show you. So to create this just really faint hue, I'm going to use a blending brush um, and some Coastal Cabana. And I'm just going to lightly go over this paper pretty quickly. I don't, I don't want this dark. I just want it to be a really faint hue. There, that's it. And actually, I realize you can hardly tell on the camera, but it's there. There, I added a little more. Now you can see. <laughs> So now we're going to punch out repeated images of this punch. And um, to get the most use of your paper, measure how wide your punch is and just grab a strip of paper that wide. And another tip is, especially for this punch, because we've got one fish longer and one shorter, I'm going to actually rotate this so I can nestle this long fish up against this short one and get more use out of my paper. Look, so there's very little waste. And now I'm going to do it again. Flip it. And flip it. I actually don't know if I need this many fish. <laughs> now this punch comes with these little fins that you can glue on your fish. That would look adorable. I am not going to take the time to do that. But that's what those little pieces are for. So kind of keep your white fish off to the side here so you don't get ink on them. And now we're going to punch our focal point. For this card, I just used one color, but for the one we're making right now, I'm going to use two colors. And I'm just going to use the same color of ink that is the same color as my cardstock. You want to wipe off your stamp in between uh, changing colors. I'm going to use Granny Apple for this one. I find it easier for this to punch it. Uh, to, sorry, to stamp it first and then punch it because I can maneuver the piece of paper with my other hand to get it lined up. And then I gently press, make sure it's lined up, and then I punch it out. Now, for efficient use of paper on this, I, I measured the width of that image. And actually, both of these are just an inch. So really, use a scrap piece, a one-inch scrap. We all got them. Um, to be able to punch these out, I didn't have to cut into a new piece of paper for this. And I don't remember if I mentioned, but this bigger fish is also a one-inch strip. So you can use that same thing if you want to make a different card with... Oh, I ran out of paper there, but it would fit. Now you're going to grab a sentiment um, out of there. 
out of your stamp set. And I am I don't want to have to measure this. So what I'm going to use is just a scrap piece of paper and I'm going to stamp near the bottom, trying to make it straight along the edge. And I did not do it. OK, <laughs> let's do that again. And actually, since this gorgeous grape is so dark, I'm actually going to stamp on this end. Let's see if we can get this straight. And you know what, if it doesn't, if it's not straight, hey, I did good. But if it's not straight, I actually could have trimmed that. But um, so what we're going to do now is bring in the paper trimmer and trim this off. So you won't see a measurement for this um, sentiment on my website because you're just going to grab a strip of uh, scrap and then just trim it down to what you want. And that is going to be way too big. So let's just keep trimming. Oh man, that looks so nice and so perfect. So you can see this would be a pain in the butt to trim this little thing and try to stamp on it. So it's easier to stamp on a bigger piece of paper and trim it down. I'm sorry I said butt. <laughs> okay, so now, now what I found was easiest is to figure out where you want your focal point to be and attach those and then figure out where you want your whitefish. Now, I, just for interest, I want to um, pop these up with dimensionals. I know they're going to stand out just because they're a different color from the whitefish, but I wanted them to extra stand out. So I'm going to pop these up and we're going to put them with this one. I think I want them right in the middle. I kind of want them kissing because my sentiment says love never fails. There. Or maybe they're just chatting. Oh no, that's not centered. Oh yay. It wasn't completely stuck yet. Okay. Now we'll try. I got to bring this over my eyeballs here. There we go. Okay. Now this is, I, I think this is the fun part. So what I'm going to do is put my fish all around. I want some of them coming off the edge. You got to decide if you want them going all different directions. I think I do. On some of my examples, I'll show you. I had all the fish going in like the same direction. So it kind of was cool. So it looks like I don't have enough fish. I could add some more. I'm actually going to space these out. But I also think once I cut these off the edge, I'll be able to flip them and use them to fill in some of the space. If your glue doesn't work right away, it's because it's plugged up a little bit. So you just take your fingers and kind of pinch the top and you get kind of a little goober come out and then it works. So when you're laying these down, you want to kind of be cognizant of where you want the glue to go. I don't want to glue over here because it's going to get goop everywhere. So I just put a little bit here and it doesn't need very much glue. Okay, so now when you have it like this, this is obviously... Not going to fit on the card. So you're going to flip it over, take your paper snips, and just trim off all these fish. But keep them, because we can attach them. All right, now we'll take our extra pieces here and figure out where these go. Like, this can't go here because there's no fish. But if I turn it this way, there, we'll fill in the spots. Or you can just punch more. So there we go. That's it. Isn't that so cute? Okay, so now grab your card base. And I'm going to do white on white, but it might look super cool if it was all colored. And we're going to stamp on the inside. So there are just some really pretty things in this uh, stamp set. I just love. Oh, let's see. Let's bring back in this Coastal Cabana that we used on the front. And I'm actually going to stamp this off because I don't want it like really dark because I want to stamp my fish on top of there. Where's my little fish? Should we do one more? I think it needs one more. We're going to go like this. They are super cute. Don't forget your envelope. Oh, that's so cute, man. I love it. Okay. Sometimes just the playful little cards are great. Boy, I did not do a good job folding that. Okay, so I'm folding along the score line. Oh, yeah, I did do good. Okay, good. And we'll just burnish that down. And you could pop this whole thing up with dimensionals, but I am just going to glue this down. 
There we go. Let me show you some other examples, give you more ideas. All right, so here's the one we made with the matching envelope. And this is the one I showed at the beginning. I can't remember if I showed the inside. Then I did this one in Flirty Flamingo. Oh, sorry, this one's Mango Melody. This one's Flirty Flamingo. Oh, I have it taped shut because I was taking pictures of it. Isn't that cute? And then this was the one that has no color. And then this one, I put the little white fish just in a line. And this, I just taped the thread underneath the sentiment and underneath the fish and then popped those up on dimensionals with dimensionals there. If your wish list is a kind of long and over $100, you may want to consider joining Stampin' Up! It's the best deal. That's what I did. I wanted a great deal. You can get the starter kit. It's $99 for the starter kit. You pick $125 worth of products. And there's usually a freebie that's thrown in depending on what promotion is going on. So you can reach out to me to find out what that is. But if you have any questions about that, um, let me know and I can help you decide if that's the right decision for you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a sunny day.